Hello friends, in this video I would like to tell you about Rick Rubin's wonderful book called The Creative Act, A Way of Being. I'm right now in one of my favorite bookshops in London. It's on Gower Street in the center of London and I thought it would be a perfect place to tell you about this book and some ideas that inspired me and impressed me the most. piece of advice by Rick Rubin is that try to replace the word productivity from your vocabulary to words such as engagement, focus. Instead of saying, I'm going to try to be more productive today, try to say that I'm going to be more engaged, more focused in what I create, in what I do. There are those who approach the opportunities of each day like crossing items of a to-do list. Instead of truly engaging and participating with all of themselves, our continual quest for efficiency discourages looking too deeply. The pressure to deliver doesn't grant us time to consider all possibilities. I think the word productivity is a little bit toxic, a little bit useless when applied in the wrong context. I also wanted to say that I'm going to jump back and forth from my reading corner to this bookshop when I talk about this. In his second piece of advice, he tells us that we should learn how to design rules, rules that can assist us throughout our creative process. And I have a really great example of this, which I'm going to tell you in my reading corner. A very cliched example of a rule that I follow, which resonates very closely with what Rick Rubin says. The simple rule that I follow is that when I sit down in this reading corner of mine, I put my phone on do not disturb mode, and I put my phone far away out of sight somewhere in another room so I don't see it. The purpose of this rule is not to be productive. The purpose of this rule is to be engaged. I never understood people who set themselves a certain rules such as to read 30 pages a day. What's the purpose of a silly rule like this? What if you read only 20 pages and be focused, be completely paying attention to those 20 pages. The rules are there to assist us, to help us instead of restricting us. So don't create rules for yourself that are tyrannical. When there are no material, time and budget constraints, you have unlimited options. When you accept limitations, your range of choices is reduced. Whether imposed by design or by necessity, it is helpful to see limitations as opportunities. In the next piece of advice that I found incredibly useful, Rick Rubin says that no art is possible without constraints. Many people message me and they ask me about journaling and they tell me that they struggle with the blank page, that they sit down and they want to keep a journal, but they don't know what to write about. In my opinion, the problem that they are facing is not the lack of material, but the abundance of it. When you can write about everything in your life, you don't know what to write about. My piece of advice in this situation and applying what the advice that Rick Rubin gives us here, try to focus on a particular topic. Let's say you are a passionate and avid reader. Try to write about books that you read and nothing else. Every time you read a book, you finish a chapter or you finish a page, try to write your opinion and keep a journal and document your journey throughout the book. In this case, you will be able to have a focus because the problem that you are having right now is the lack of focus. There, is what, there are way too many things that you want to write about. By selecting a single topic, you'll make your life much easier. Right, we are out of the shop. Look at this wonderful church behind me, but also behind me, that right there in the distance, you can see George Orwell's um, inspiration for the Ministry of Truth right here. This is the building that inspired George Orwell and his Ministry of Truth.
continue our journey through Bloomsbury and now we are going past a park. I bought by the way some books. So the fourth piece of advice that Rick Rubin gives us. By the way, look at this church right here before I'll tell you. So many interesting, beautiful cathedrals. I don't know, I love architecture, but I digress. The fourth piece of advice that Rick Rubin tells us is that always treat everything that you create as a diary entry, as a journal entry. No piece of art is the final expression of who you are. In a paragraph where he talks about musicians and their creations, he says, yet an album is only a diary entry of a moment of time, a snapshot reflection of who the artist is for that period. And no one diary entry is our life story. Our life's work is far greater than any individual container. We create to express how we feel and how we feel change over time. And once we delay our creations, we lost that feeling. We feel disconnected with the work that we create. Instead, the creation should be very focused, engaged, but at the same time, it should be spontaneous because spontaneity gives us an opportunity to express how we genuinely feel when we watch a film and the impression is fresh, when we read a book and we think about it because all the ideas are circulating in our heads. Very often I didn't review books because I read them, I got very impressed with what they say, but I moved on and six months later, the freshness, the spontaneity disappeared with it. I really wish that Rick Rubin's book was published like 10 years ago because if I had heard about this advice that I can actually create something chapter by chapter instead of aiming at creating some grand thing you know some grand piece of art I would have started my creative journey much earlier I decided to leave this piece of advice to the end because I think it connects all the dots together. In one of his chapters, Rick Rubin tells us that he says that we should never forget that every work of art has its underlying essence. Every work of art has its skeleton that supports all the flesh. And I think it's such a visual and great metaphor. It's that every work of art has its skeleton on which all the flesh, all the structure is hanging. It's such a great metaphor to think. And every time now when I make videos, when I write newsletters, when I make my podcasts, I always think, what's the skeleton of this? What's the essence of this work? If you remove certain things out of your work, you know, if you say, what if I remove this? If something changes in your work, you realize that, that it is part of skeleton, you know, like it is an essential thing that holds everything together. I think it was Michelangelo also who said that he sees a block of stone and he removes everything out of it, all the useless parts of the stone, and that's how the angel is born. So in short, always pay attention to the structure of your creations, or to the skeleton, to the underlying fundamental element that is important to it. So often we sleepwalk through our lives. Consider how different your experience of the world might be if you engaged in every activity with the attention you might have given to landing a plane. Thank you once again for watching. Let me know which pieces of advice was the most interesting, the most applicable to you. I would really love to hear your opinion down in the comment section. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, I would like to ask you to leave a like, you know, or to subscribe to my channel. Each of them boost my, boost my channel, more people discover it, more people will hear about this advice, and I'll see you in the next one.